Hi everyone, and welcome back to another Filming Our TV session. I'm your host for today, Juliana. Now, today we're going to be working on safety plans. Safety plans are tools that we use uh, to help protect ourselves when we might not be doing the best. Sometimes you might use a safety plan if things are unsafe at home, if you don't trust your own safety in your hands, or if you realize that things are starting to go downhill and you would like to stop it before it gets too far. So maybe now you're thinking, I don't need a safety plan, I, I trust myself, or I don't need a safety plan, I'm doing great. And that's the trick about safety plans, is when you're doing well. That's when you want to create it. When you're not doing okay, it, I am a despicable human being. It's a bit more difficult to know what will help you. That's why when you're doing safety plans, it's important to do it when you're feeling very good about your mental wellness. So that being said, let's get started on our safety plans. So I'm going to go over this safety plan with you verbally. Um, so what I tend to do is I'll start with the medicine wheel and go, okay, um, let's start with the mental. What are the warn warning signs that I get mentally? So this would be the negative self-talk that I experience. When I experience my depression and my suicidal ideation, I tend to experience negative self-talk where a lot of my mental energy goes towards telling myself that I am not good enough and that I am only a burden to others. That is a huge warning sign to me. As soon as I see that sign, I stop immediately and try to go to my corrective behavior right away. So my helping activity at that point is to turn it around and go, wait a second, I know you, you silly little brain of mine. I know I'm not a burden to others. How do I know that? Because people still come to talk to me and they still reach out to me when they need support and they offer me to reach out to them when I seek support. So what I'm doing there is I'm challenging those negative thoughts and that negative self-talk. Next, let's do spiritual. Well, what are the warning signs? For me, um, some of my spiritual warning signs is not caring about the world around me, what's going on, not looking at, you know, how amazing our world is to function the way it is. Uh, to have a tree that can grow and provide nourishment to so many different animals. So when I'm noticing that I have kind of that spiritual fall or that spiritual setback warning sign, I'll usually take a moment and smudge myself or smudge my house. For physical signs, for physical signs, there's a couple. Uh, the first one is that I will not want to get up and move around. So how do I challenge that? Well, you guessed right, I force myself to get up and move around. <laughs> it's really that easy. My second very unique to me special warning sign is that I live with stomatic disorder, which means when I go through high periods of stress or high areas of depression, my body uh, just convulses into a ton of physical pain. That's a huge warning sign to me is if I'm in pain, I have bells flashing going, hey, you're not doing okay. And that's when I take a step back. I'll do some yoga, I'll do some deep breathing. Now, don't we love the fun one? Emotional. Well, what are the warning signs? Well, emotional warning signs could be a feeling of helplessness, hopelessness, feeling of danger, feeling fear. Uh, for emotional, the helping activity that I tend to do most is either spend time with my cats, uh, spend time outside when it's not covered in snow, <laughs> spend time with family, um, connecting to my emotions, and sitting down and asking questions. Uh, if you've seen the how to sit and talk to your anger 
that has been a huge coping tool in my life uh, recently actually to be able to sit down and go hey why am I feeling this way what's up it's okay to feel this way but like let's look at it another emotional thing that I do is when I'm not feeling good I reach out to others and I tell them hey like I need to chat <laughs> I'm not doing okay We know our warning signs. That was easy. <laughs> Next, our coping skills. Well, we did that with the medicine wheel. That was even better, wasn't it? And social supports. Well, who can I go to? Well, I can go to Chea. I know Chea will always help me. I can go to Papa or Elder Dave. I know he'll always help me. I can see him at Saikatawa. I could talk to Jenna. Jenna's a great support person that I have. Or maybe I can talk to my sister. And you know what, if you don't follow your safety plan, cool! You know what it's there for? Keeping you safe. As long as you're safe, that is important. That is the most important step, is making sure that you are safe. The more often you update your safety plan, the better it is. Um, I know for me, things can change from day to day, and that's why uh, kicking around my house right now, I have maybe 10, 15 different safety plans because at different points, I need different supports, and I'm aware of that. <laughs> Yeah, you. You wanna know something? You uh, promised not to tell? I still don't have an outro. <laughs> <laughs>